is Cat's Diamond Painting. I'm here today to do a ultra quick unboxing of my next project that I've selected and then a bit of a kitten chat which is my most common version of a whip and chat meaning that I'm going to kit up this project and just chat along to you about what's new with me and some exciting news I have to share. Um, and you can just grab your own project, grab your own whip or whatever you're working on and work along with me while I fill you in. So, as I say, it's going to be a quick unboxing because I've not shown this on the channel before, but I have opened it previously when it arrived, like I think before I even started this channel. Oh, that's my cat just leaving the room if you heard a thudding noise. That was him jumping off his cat tree. So as you can see, the next project that I have chosen to work on is an evening stroll. And this is by Deborah Malcolm and it's a Diamond Art Club round kit. You can see the, the round symbol there. And it is 71 by 56 centimetres, so a kind of mid-size painting. And the reason I've chosen this painting to work on is I'm just finishing up a square kit. Then I have one other square kit on the go and I also have a small round kit on the go but that one's a bit different because I'm doing that bit by bit on my TikTok. You know those kind of pick a number TikToks that people do? Well I'm doing one of those. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it, I'm, I'm doing that on there but I'm, I'm not working on it freely if you like. I'm only doing that when I can film. So I thought it would be fun to have a round project to kick off once I finish my current square. So then I'll kind of just have one square, one round and this other project that's a bit different. That was my rationale anyway. So this kit came out, gosh it's got to be over a year ago now I imagine. I think it came out fairly early 2022. And I just, I thought this was gorgeous. I do admire a lot of Deborah Malcolm's work. It's so stunning. But I think that this is the only one I own. Although I am very interested in the rest of this series because this is an evening stroll. And I think she's done um, a nighttime one which is licensed to Enablers Outposts, which I've been eyeing up. And also she's just done a dawn one, which I don't know if it's licensed to anyone yet. But anyway, I love that there's a series. So yeah, I picked this one out just because I wasn't really sure what I fancied working on, to be honest. So I thought that I would just go for one that I've had for a good long while and that's got lots of nice bright colours. And there's also only 44 colours in it, um, so that should mean that it's, it's not too big a job to kit up. So I'll show you some of the, uh, the drills. Bear with me while I open this pack trying to do the worst of the crinkling off camera there. So here's my drills and aren't they pretty? What a gorgeous colour palette! If you know anything about me and my channel, you will probably know that I love, love, love working with bright colours. So all the oranges and reds in this are just going to be divine to me. Now what did we have in the way of special drills? We've got... I've got four ABs. So I've got a pink, a sort of beige one, a yellow one and a green one. So I'll see if I can have a quick look for those. But I'm not going to go through all the drills because I'm about to kit them up. So you'll see them very soon. Um, let me see. Not in these bigger bags. Diamond Dark Club arranges their drills in order of size of bag. So quite often the ABs because they're mainly used for accents are in the smaller bag and that seems to be the case here right so here is 129 which is a lovely sort of pale buttery yellow that I've worked on quite often and I always really enjoy and then oh 117 look at that one they quite often do these kind of cream slash beige colours in AB, which doesn't sound great. And yet it's really pretty because it's all about the coating that goes on top. And it's a sort of rainbow effect coating. And then there's one, three, four. And the last one. Oh, I haven't found it. It must actually be a bigger bag that I've lost over. Yep. Okay. So a bit more of this pink 113. 
than there is of the others. So they're going to be gorgeous accents through the painting. I've seen this painting done and it is just so stunning. So let's have a quick look at the canvas and then I'll crack on with kitting up. Right, I'm going to roll my canvas back on itself. And then see how much of it I can fit in frame. I'm sort of off to the side because I'm using my tripod today rather than my overhead arm for my camera. So it's uh, I'm just trying not to bash the tripod. If you do suddenly judder around, that will be what I've done. <laughs> Okay, here we are, not too bad, you can see most of it. So, I'll just move this along and you can see all those gorgeous pinky, purpley blues and reds and oranges and yellows, it's gorgeous. And then the top layer just looks like that all the way along. It's a very, very pretty painting. And I love um, when colours really like stand out. So what I'm trying to say is you've got all these colours in the background and then the black is going to be such a cool juxtaposition against that. It's going to really like pop out. And Diamond Art Club's drills are so super sparkly that it's going to be really, really pretty. So yes, this is what I'm going to be kitting up. So I'm going to get myself organised now and then I will come back to you. Okay, I'm back. I've got my tray over here set up with 44 containers with like a rough guesstimate of the sizes that I might need. And I've got another tray a bit further back where I can just swap and change as necessary. I have copied my sticker sheet, which is always my first step. Um, I just stick this through my photo um, photo printer and make a copy of it and then I can use this as I'm going through just in case I need a key to figure out what symbols are what because this will be chopped up shortly for me to use the stickers. So I'll use my paper guillotine to just neaten this up and then I can crack on. I find this thing so satisfying. <laughs> If you're ever messing around with bits of paper like this, I highly recommend looking into picking up one of these. I think this only cost me maybe five or six pounds on Amazon a while ago, and obviously I've had it for ages, because eventually I'm guessing the blade will dull, but it hasn't yet. And it's just so helpful for this kind of thing. Absolutely non-essential, you know. <laughs> it's not doing anything that a pair of scissors wouldn't, but it's, it's just nice, it's satisfying. So that's that, which I'll put to the side now. And then I just want to cut my sticker sheet. So my labels I'm going to use while I'm kitting up. This I will just keep in the lid of my storage um, container so that I know which whip it's for. And then eventually it will go in a book I have upstairs. Right. So I'm going to start with the smallest packs and the smallest containers and see how I get on to give me an idea of how well they're going to fit. Because obviously the smallest container I can fit things in, the more they're going to fit. Like one of these normally does a painting of this size fine, but it does depend a little bit on how, how the different containers are filled, if that makes sense. <laughs> So how is everyone today? It's been a couple of weeks, I think, since I've done a chatty video. That's my goal at the moment, is to do a chatty video where I just fill you in on life updates and, and that kind of thing every couple of weeks, whether that's a kitting up or a whipping chat. So that's my aim, unless I have absolutely nothing to talk about, which is always possible. <laughs> I hope it's not too dark in here. It looks all right in my viewfinder, but hopefully it's okay. In fact, I might just open the window 
rather open the curtain a little bit more I'm right next to a big window so there's plenty of natural daylight here but sometimes it's too much so I have to carefully balance how much of the curtain is open Okay, that's a bit better, I think. Right, what's first? Oh, and I have a big bowl here just for my rubbish. So I'll put all the little packs in there off to the side. 939. Okay, off I go. So I last caught you up, I think, to the end of my son's Easter holidays. And he's had two weeks back at school now. Well, he hasn't really been back for two weeks, but I'll get on to that. <laughs> so the first week, what happened? He um, he didn't want to go back, which he pretty much never does. <laughs> he's fine when he's in school, but I mean, like any self-respecting kid, he prefers to be at home and it's it's not always the easiest for him. He, um, he gets a... I think friendships have been just a little tricky this year. You know, they're getting to an age where hormones are kicking in and people aren't always the kindest. So he's had a few rough experiences this year, unfortunately. He does have two really good friends that he plays with a lot at the moment, so hopefully he'll have a good week playing with them now. So we had a lovely Easter holidays and yeah, it came to an end as all good things must. I quite enjoyed the piece <laughs> that first week. I mean, my husband was here working at home somewhere. Upstairs, generally, while I'm downstairs doing my dime painting bits and bobs. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's, that's quieter. <laughs> I say that the very first day of school, my son brought a friend home with him. <laughs> we were walking with them um, after school and they were going, please, can she come back? Please, could she come back? And I know the parents quite well and, and, you know, we're on casual enough terms that it's okay to do things at really short notice, but be like, this is only for a couple of hours, you know, we're not doing the whole shebang with eating and feeding her and all that sort of thing. So yeah, that was a nice easing into going back to school for him. Oops. And I did not a huge amount that week, I don't think. I um oh I had a bit of a drama on the Thursday. I, I went to give blood. Um so don't worry, I won't tell you any squeamish bits, it's just about me not handling it very well. I haven't given blood for years because I used to give blood quite regularly and then I reached a point where well I I had a bad experience I won't go into in case people don't like to hear it. And it really put me off. And I hadn't been in about 12 years, which I felt really bad about. And they called me last summer, um, because obviously I'm still on the register, and said, you know, we'd really love it if you could come back. Your blood type is in particular, you know, we're in particularly short supply of it. So I made an appointment for just after our holiday in Portugal. But I don't remember if I told you this at the time, but I went to the appointment. And then because I'd had a stomach bug when we were in Portugal... Um, I couldn't give blood because you have to be something like two weeks clear of a stomach bug because if you've got any kind of dodgy bacteria and that kind of thing in your stomach it could be really harmful for vulnerable people who get an infusion of your blood if there's somehow traces of it so that made sense but yeah I, I rescheduled and then I think I had to reschedule that that rescheduled appointment and yeah you have to wait quite a while between appointments so basically that took me to now, <laughs> to April before I've actually managed to give blood. And I did manage to give blood, that bit all went fine, so that's something. But then afterwards, they have you sit sort of still in the chair for a bit obviously to make sure that you're okay and gradually ease up. And I just got to sitting upright and I thought, hmm, do I feel a bit weird or am I imagining it? And then within the space of, you know, probably 10 seconds, I went from fine to wondering if I felt a bit weird to, yeah, I definitely feel weird. And my vision started blacking out. And I just managed to say to the, um, I'm not sure if he was a nurse or an attendant, I don't know what you'd call him. Um, I just managed to say, I, do, I don't feel right. My vision's going black. 
<laughs> and then it was like all hands to the pump they seat you in these chairs that tip back for giving blood um so they basically just like plunged me backwards <laughs> so my legs were in the air above my head to help blood flow back to my head I guess and yeah I felt really really weird and it took probably a good 20 minutes half an hour for me to feel normal enough to get moving again they were plying me with snacks like salty and sweet snacks I had to call my husband to pick me up I was planning to walk home, I was very ambitious, and <laughs> they said to write, how are you getting home today, did you drive, I was like, no, my husband dropped me off, they said, and is he picking you up, I said, he is now, <laughs> so he had to come pick me up, which was, it was lucky he was at home, but that was fine, he was able to come, but it was so strange, I've never had an experience like that, I've never fainted in my life, and I don't think I did quite faint, because I, I think I stayed aware and conscious the whole time, <coughs> but obviously I was about to faint <laughs> and would have done if they hadn't quickly pushed me back in the chair so <laughs> it was a bit of excitement <laughs> and I have to say I did feel quite rubbish for the rest of the day I was really 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 tired I went home and my husband had to do the school run as well so <laughs> really got out of everything and he had to cook that evening because I was told I shouldn't stand around at all um, and yeah I was I was very tired I, I went to sleep for a good hour hour and a half after I got home and then I think I went to sleep quite early that night as well so apparently it takes it out of you almost fainting but it's funny because people say that someone blacked out don't they to mean that they fainted and I never realised how literal an expression it was until now because it's so bizarre just all this this blackness encroaching on your vision from the sides and just getting more and more it's really disconcerting I suppose the only thing to be said about it that makes it not so bad is, is that you don't feel I mean I remember it all but I guess you're not very with it if you're on the verge of passing out so yeah Anyways, <laughs> the nurse said to me, no, right, you should try and come again sooner next time, not leave it so long till your next donation, and then you'll be more used to it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely thinking about my next donation right now. <laughs> but I will go again. I just, I'll make sure that my husband's on hand to give me lifts and everything. I won't go into it all blasé thinking I'll just trot home happily afterwards and do the school run and stuff like that. <laughs> Um, right, I'm going to need some smaller trays, I think. Well, actually, I won't, I don't need them, but I don't really like to have um, containers, like, mostly empty, you know. If a small tray will do fine, I prefer to use a small tray. So... That was that first week back. And then on the weekend, sort of last weekend, um, my in-laws came to visit for the day. So actually we went into a museum that day because my son had done a project with his school with a local museum where they'd done all this wildlife stuff and they'd done lovely pictures of butterflies and they were on display in, in the Natural History Museum in Oxford, I think it's called that. It's anyway, <laughs> something along those lines. So we went in to see that, which was very fun, and my mother-in-law came with us. My father-in-law stayed at home because he's, oh, he's, he's so helpful. He's a carpenter by trade, um, and he's mostly retired now, but still fit and well. Um, and we'd had this issue a while ago where we had a leak in our kitchen ceiling because the bath was above that, and the bath had a leak. And it had caused quite a lot of water damage to the ceiling and my husband had kind of cleared away the plaster and it had left quite a hole in the ceiling. So my father-in-law very kindly fixed that for us because I mean, my husband's fine. He can, he can put his mind to things and figure out what to do, but maybe not a natural at DIY. And I don't have a clue. To be fair, <laughs> my husband always says it's maybe sort of inadvertently his dad's fault. 
that he's not so hot on DIY because growing up his dad didn't really teach him things because it was just easier to do them himself because <laughs> he can do everything at the speed of light anyway <laughs> so he did that we went into the museum saw my son's butterfly picture which he was so excited by i've got a lovely picture of him smiling and pointing at it and then in the afternoon um my son and my husband and my in-laws all went to a local football match i don't care for football much I go to watch my son when he's, oh, where's that one come from? Is it that one? Yeah. I go to watch my son when he's playing, but that's different. That's supporting my son. I don't in general care that much about watching football. So I left them to it. <laughs> they did that and I stayed home and made a steak pie for the evening. So that was all nice and they, Stayed for dinner, had a couple of glasses of wine, headed off, um, and that was all very civilised. And then the Sunday of that weekend, oh, it all started to go downhill then. So we woke up in the morning and my son said he felt a bit sick. Now, if you're a parent, you hopefully know what I mean by this. I always want to believe my son and trust what he's saying. And I absolutely don't think he would ever completely make something up. But equally, sometimes he very much does exaggerate things because, you know, he's nine, he, he likes a bit of fuss and all the rest. And sometimes it can be quite hard to work out what's going on. And he'd say he was sick and then he would go off and seem absolutely fine. He'd be jumping around, doing all his normal things, just not behaving in any way, shape or form like a person that didn't feel well. So we thought, you know, maybe something was a bit iffy, but mostly he was okay. And every so often through the day, he'd say he felt sick again, but it wasn't anything major. He ate like normal, really didn't seem to be a problem. You can imagine where this story is going, can't you? <laughs> um, so he went to bed that night and he was tossing and turning a fair bit. And then eventually he woke up and was like, no, I really feel sick. And that was it. Off to the toilet and yeah, I'll spare you the gory details, but D and V set in. And that was him then for most of the next day. Dropped another one. That looks like it's from the same one as before. How has that been there all that time? No, it's from that. <laughs> So yeah, he was really poorly on the Monday, bless him. So obviously he couldn't go into school. Um, and they say with DMV type bugs, they don't want them to come in for 48 hours after the symptoms subside because they could be carrying something contagious and they don't want it spreading, which is absolutely fair enough. So for him, symptoms subsided probably the Monday evening. Um, so we thought, well, he's going to feel a bit grotty a couple of days and then he will be fine and he'll go into school on, um, I guess it would have been Thursday. Thursday came around and he really didn't want to go in. He said his tummy hurt and, and all the rest, but he seemed fine again. So it's just, it's so hard to make a judgment call. And I think, yeah, I always second guess myself. Are we being too harsh? Are we being too soft? There's been plenty of times he stayed off and I thought you absolutely 100% well enough to go into school. And there's other times you send them in and you have this sick feeling in your stomach, like, have I done the wrong thing? It's not fair. He shouldn't have to do that. But Thursday came around and he, he wasn't feeling great, but then actually he ended up having a bit of a recurrence of symptoms. So we've been that, he was off again. <laughs> Which was such a shame because on Wednesday he had felt quite a lot better. So I don't know. I think we'd pushed him to eat a little more on the Wednesday because he'd been eating so little. And we were thinking if he's going to make it back into school tomorrow, he's got to have a bit more food in him. Or he's, you know, because obviously he was feeling really faint and wobbly by this point. Yeah, it was, it was a bit of a mess. Eventually he recovered and he made it back into school on the Friday, which again, he wasn't keen to do, but 
we really didn't think we could justify another day off for him because at that point the only thing really was that he had a low appetite so he went in and we said to him that if you feel ill you just tell your teacher and we spoke to the teacher at the start of the day and explained what was going on and said you can come home if you need to but he made it through the day so we were really proud of him very grown up I spent the whole week wondering if I was going down with it like just having you know gurgly tummy feelings that just didn't amount to anything but still weren't very nice <laughs> So yeah, that's been about it. This last weekend gone was the May Day bank holiday weekend. Um, so in um, the UK we have bank holidays like eight days a year. They're days when a lot of things are closed and most people don't go to work or school. And I was cat sitting two very lovely cats. Um, they're called Maggie and Lizzie. Maggie is super friendly, a little bit extra, really affectionate and wants lots of strokes. Lizzie is terrified of most people, <laughs> so they're very different. Um, they're sisters, this is the same household. But Lizzie is warming to me. She's letting me get much closer to her and give her a few treats. So yeah, making progress. <laughs> and the other major thing that I have been doing is the exciting news that I wanted to talk about. So I'm not sure by the time this video comes out whether I will have talked about this more publicly or not or whether this will be the first you hear of it. So, you know, bear with me. <laughs> but yes, I have been for a while now hoping to start an Etsy shop. And earlier this year, um, I got really inspired by another Etsy store to start creating my own putty. So there's this lovely lady called Abby, who's Abby's Diamond Painting Putty on Etsy, who you should absolutely still check out. Not trying to steal her thunder at all. Um, and she started producing putty and I thought, you know, I'd thought about doing that kind of thing before, but didn't feel confident enough to go for it. And then I thought, yeah, if she's done it, I can do it. So I've been working super hard on it all the time I've been trialing things and I happened to come across a formula that worked really really well for me early on so I was very fortunate. My putty is quite different to hers so hers is the only other one available within the UK at the moment as far as I'm aware without buying from abroad and mine works quite differently which I'm pleased about. I mean it it works that way because that's my preference. I've made the putty how I like to have putty. Um, but it's good because we're basically offering alternatives for people rather than being competition as such. Um, so I like my putty coloured. I like it scented. And I like it not overly sticky um, to the point where I'm going to have issues with drills sticking to the putty. Um, and I don't mind if it lasts a tiny bit less time before refills as a result if it works very smoothly in the pen. And that is what I have managed to develop, in my view. <laughs> so I've worked on it, I've, I've made batches and batches and batches of it, tested them out thoroughly at home. Because um, I don't paint for hours generally anyway, so it's easy for me to test it. And I've sent several out I must have sent at least 10 different ones out to people to trial because I really wanted feedback to it. is it just me who likes this or are other people going to enjoy it and find it helpful too and the feedback I had was overwhelmingly positive people saying they were diamond painting for a bit longer because they were finding it so enjoyable with the putty people saying they were never going back to pink wax if they you know hadn't tried putties and things before um and it was just, it's so satisfying that it's its all been working out and I'm so proud that I've been able to bring something different to the UK market. It's going really well so far. I went live on, in, on Etsy on Thursday and I mentioned it to a few of the people who tested for me who had said they'd be interested in purchasing it in the future like I don't want to spam people but people who, who had already said you know that they were quite interested 
Um, and a couple of, actually three people bought things straight away that first night, which was amazing. Um, and then I've just, I've had a few more sales trickle in over the weekend. So I'm up to, at, at the time of filming, I've had 22 sales. Um, no reviews as of yet, because the way it works with Etsy is until Etsy thinks you will have received the parcel, you can't review. So even if things come quicker in the post than expected for the kind of post you've used, you can't review. So it's too early, basically. Um, it's possible people could start receiving them today because we've had the bank holiday, so that's delayed things. But hopefully by later this week, there'll be some reviews and hopefully those are going to back up the experience of my testers and I'm going to feel a lot more confident at that point. Right now, I'm like, I'm really proud. I'm really happy with the product that I'm putting out there. But I need a little bit of a little bit more positive reassurance particularly from people who haven't already tested it to see if they like it too. <laughs> so yeah, I'm in a bit of a holding pattern. At some point, I will launch it properly, probably on Instagram. And that's where I will probably use my, my cat's diamond painting um, channel on Instagram is what I'm talking about. That's where I will do things like launch new scents, most likely. But I don't really want to put it on there and mention it to a much wider audience until I'm just a little further along, which I'm hoping I will be by the time this video goes out next week. So yeah, if you do want to check me out, I am Crafting Cat UK on Etsy. And as I say, I will be providing proper links to it in due course when I'm ready for it. Right now I'm doing domestic shipping only. In the future, I hope to be able to open up for international shipping. But again, I just I need to build my confidence, make sure that I can scale up sufficiently if necessary, all of that kind of thing. And I just I don't want to go, I don't want to bite off more than I can chew and go too big before before I'm up to it, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'm really excited. It's just been good timing for me as well, because like I said, I've been thinking about doing an Etsy shop for years and thinking about all the different products I might like to put in there. Um, I didn't have very much experience with putty, so it wasn't high on my list until more recently. But as I've said before, I'm very much a, like when something grabs me, I go all in. So I haven't been using putty for a very long time, but I have been using it a lot <laughs> and trialing different ones since I started using it enough to know what I like and to know how different putties perform in different conditions so that I felt confident to do this. But I, in general, just have been feeling like I needed a new project. Like I don't have, um, I don't have a job. Like I have worked in various forms since having my son nine years ago, but I haven't actually had a kind of turn up every day and do your job work, if, if that makes sense, um, since before I had him. All right, how are we doing for colours here? So that's a double pack. Um, and I just felt like he's nine now, he doesn't need me as much. It was a good time to embrace a new challenge, to give me a new project to do, and a bit more purpose. And it's perfect because it's it's all about the hobby that I spend most of my time doing anyway. So it doesn't take me away from my hobby. And it, I'm hoping that by putting out a great new product, I will be able to enhance the dime painting experience of other people too. We shall see. So fingers crossed that the week <laughs> between me filming this and putting this video out has gone well and hopefully you'll be hearing more about it soon if, if that's something that you're interested in but don't worry this channel is not going to become just you know promotion for my etsy store that's always going to be very much a sideline and this channel will be very much how it always has been um just maybe with occasional mentions of, of my shop right so i've cut all those up to figure out what i can fit because I'm now worried that I should have stuck with smaller pots for longer because I've got quite a lot here so the black's gonna go in there maybe I'll do that and then I'll count up what else I've got and how they'll fit 
Maybe some of these single bag ones will go in these still. Because otherwise I'm going to be stuck. Right, we'll get the black out of the way. I'm getting used to feeling so busy again because I'm sort of having to plan my week out now um, which I love actually it takes me back to when I worked and I prided myself on being organized so you know I have lists of the videos that I'm going to be putting out and when I need to film them when I need to edit them and what date they're going up um, I've got um, some of those will have external deadlines if they're working in collaboration with another shop so I need to be really mindful of that. And then I'm also planning ahead for the shop. So I'm planning, um, you know, when I'm going to release new scents, what I need to do. You know, there's workload associated with that. The whole thing so far, in fact, and this is not in any way a complaint, but it's probably surprised me how much it's been kind of hard work. Um, like mentally because of all that planning, but that makes sense. But also physically, actually, I'm just going to put that there in case this doesn't work out. 742. Um, it's, it's quite demanding making it. It takes me, well, two hours or so would get me about 16 ish putties ready to sell. But that's two hours of really kind of heaving the putties around. Um, it's quite hard work working through the colour and the scent rolling it, getting it through my roller machine, it, it, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot, and it's really good, it's fun, it's different, I'm not complaining at all, but it's something that I'm having to plan out, because I, you know, I couldn't do like a whole day of making putties, for instance, Ugh. I trusted this to fit after the last one, and it didn't, <laughs> I need to space it out through the week so I've got a plan tomorrow for instance to make another colour that looks like it might need restock another scent that looks like it might need restocking soon and then I've got new putties coming out at the end of the week and it's just yeah it's good I love it I love the mental challenge I love the physical challenge I'm really enjoying it but I haven't done much actual diamond painting in the past couple of days because I've been so focused on the putty side of things so I'm looking forward, after I filmed, to doing that. Oh! I need to anyway, because I've got the putties that I made yesterday I'm, I'm testing out, because I don't like to put anything up for sale till I've actually used it a bit myself. Because there are inconsistencies between batches sometimes. Um, which, you know, I, I warn about. On the shop, I can't ever guarantee that Every single batch will be like every single batch. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what I'm doing. Oh, I lost track of what I was saying. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so these can just go in the large ones now. Um, as long as they all fit in the large ones. Ah, it'll be fine. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> So yeah, as I say, I'm not going to be using this channel to do hard sell, but I will just recap this one time now just to cover it off in case my putty sounds like something that would complement your diamond painting experience. So it is a slightly drier putty than some. Um, it doesn't tend to be stringy and it tends to handle AB drills and that kind of thing really well. Maybe not when it's absolutely fresh in the pen, but certainly within a few minutes of usage, it will handle ABs and it won't come out of the placer and it won't do anything to the coating. At least that has been the experience that I've had so far and everyone else who has tried it has reported similar. 
So that I think is a really exciting feature for me because I hate having to switch around pens and have a pen that's got dirty wax and have a pen that's got dirty putty and all the rest in order to handle these. And it puts me off placing them and this kind of removes a lot of that hassle. It probably will not be the longest lasting putty in your pen out there. So if your priority is just not having to change it very often, it maybe isn't the one for you. But I'm pretty confident guaranteeing it should last you longer than any kind of basic wax options. So if you feel like just getting a bit more mileage out of it than you typically do from your wax options and having it look pretty and smell pretty and being a sort of one-stop shop for all your special drills sounds like your kind of thing, then do check it out, see if you like it. I do sell samples uh, for a lower cost when I have them in stock as well, so that's a good way to try them out. Yep, hopefully that all makes sense and I haven't been too annoying with the sales part of it. I'm trying to find a balance between leaving my channels untouched as they are, but also having invested time and effort and mental power and money <laughs> in setting this up you know obviously I do want to have some sales <laughs> so that is my big news I was telling my parents about it on the weekend they were a bit shocked <laughs> actually my mum rang because she had been watching one of my videos my sister had naughtily sent her one of the videos <laughs> I say naughty just because it makes me cringe a little bit um, when my family watch the videos because, I don't know, it's just... Uh, <laughs> it's like a different side of me and I just, I, yeah. <laughs> I saw this um, description of um, people earlier that really resonated with me. Some, it, it was something doing around on TikTok and it was like, are you both an introvert and an extrovert? And I was like, well, yes yes I am that is exactly me <laughs> because I am quite introverted in many ways I'm quite shy like I don't want to put my face on here at all I'm I find it difficult in person a lot of the time with people but then in other things I can be quite confident and put myself out there like I have built this channel and I have had the confidence to start this shop so yeah I'm I'm a bit of a contradiction really <laughs> and part of that is that I, I just yeah I feel really awkward <laughs> when my family watch my videos they're really lovely about it obviously but um but yeah <laughs> I don't mind like if any of you are watching this now it's fine I'm just waffling on about it less colour was pretty nice and easy. It's an older kit that predates the times when they had um, particular issues with static, so it's not so bad. And after I've done this, I am going to sort the kitchen. So I've got to do the dishwasher, get some washing on, that kind of thing. Get some food out to the frost for dinner tonight. I think I'm going to make some koftas and a tzatziki and that kind of thing. And then I will, oh, I'll probably do some editing and then I'm going to sit down and I'm going to just diamond paint until it's school pickup time. It sounds like bliss. <laughs> right, last thing I'm going to do is sort these no i have i'm gonna have to have it on an angle for you i'm afraid because i've got the camera at an angle and i can't i can't deal <laughs> so i'm just gonna put them in the dmc number order like i normally do sorry nancy <laughs> if you're watching <laughs> um right number five number five Nancy is one of my viewers who likes to arrange things by symbols and I did that once for my mystery kit and I actually did really like it but as soon as I went back to um, kits that weren't mystery kits and I wasn't really relying on patterns to identify the symbols I've gone back to my old ways 
I wouldn't rule out kitting it out the other way again, but yeah, not just now. Oh, it's going to be so rainbow bright, this. I love it. I think the actual picture looks kind of darker than the drills that have gone into it in a way. I suppose that's because of the... Um, I can't even see what I'm doing here. I suppose it's it's just the effect of those shadowy dark bits in the middle. Anyway, it's interesting. I think it looks beautiful completed and I can't wait. Although I'm going to have to work on it the other way to usual on my easel. Normally I work on paintings so that they're portrait style direction on my easel. Um, and I don't think I'm going to be able to do that because I like to multi-place vertically. I do multi-place horizontally as well, but I like to multi-place vertically. And there's a lot of vertical lines in this. So I'm going to have to do it landscape style on my um, easel and just hope I can get it all to fit somehow. 17. Get in there. The last few tend to go quicker. There's 20 and 21. 22, look at those lovely oranges all in a row. Um, 23. So my goals for this month really are to really put a lot of effort into building the shop that is going to be a focus and then to finish hopefully finish at least one more painting I'm not sure if it will be this one or if it will be the square painting that I'm working on as well I'll probably once I finish my current butterflies in the garden whip I will probably go back to my other square painting and see if that grabs me and I can get a bit more done of it and then I'll give this one a go and I'll just see what lures me in. Um, I always talk about how I see diamond paintings. It, it, I see a lot of parallels with when I'm reading a book and sometimes I can't get into a book and sometimes it's like the book's grabbed me in and I just can't stop working on it. And I, I, it's often the same for me with diamond painting. Oh, this is annoying me that they're still so... Um, they're just going to be uneven. It's fine. I should have done it Nancy's way. It would have worked better. <laughs> okay. So that is me done for today. Um, if you're still with me, then thank you very much for watching. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>